Hey, uh, we're out of milk. Uh, watch this. Take good care of it. I will be right back. Uh, just, yeah, don't do anything I wouldn't do. How do you get in here? What? What's even in here? Oh, you are going to want to see this. Yeah, let's get up close and personal with this thing. Don't even think about it. This wayward little machine on the bench here in front of me is the Positron. You might have seen this in some show coverage in the past, but I have it here in my studio so we can take a closer look at this upside down 3D printer with a 90 degree hot end that fits into a filament box. There's a lot going on in this thing. And legitimately, it does fit inside of a filament box. Here it is. That's not necessarily the most convenient way to transport it, but you could in a pinch. The kits that are going to be shipping soon are coming with a Pelican case that you'll be able to transport it in a lot safer and it's still really not that big. I think the biggest thing for me that I adore about this thing so far in my limited experience around it is how quickly it goes from that storage mode to actually being usable. I've worked with folding 3D printers before where you have to fold them up, screw in a couple of screws with some hex wrenches and hold things in position and check that things are in 90 degrees to each other. You don't have any of that with this design. This thing is easy to get out of the box, unfold, start setting up, put the bed in place, hook up a couple of wires and you have a functional 3D printer. Like this video footage that you're seeing right now is real time. This is not sped up and it took this long to go from box to set up and ready to go. Honestly, that's kind of the point of this project is making something that packs down compact, can be folded up, can be broken down easily, set up easily, but is still a really functional and solid base for 3D printing. You came to Mandic Labs, so let's break down some of the technical stuff going on with this printer. First and foremost that I find interesting working from top down on here is the bed on this. It is a glass bed, but it is a heated glass bed that you don't see a heater element on. This is a ITO, indium tin oxide coated backside of the bed that electricity passes through to heat it. So that is a bed heater that you can see through on this thing. It also leads to a really uniform heating across the glass surface for better edge to edge heating. That heater element runs on 24 volts and it's rated to 80 degrees Celsius, which this is an open air machine, so much hotter than that probably isn't necessary. Something else interesting about the bed is it has an edge power connector to make it simpler for the assembly, where it actually slips into a socket in the back of the bed frame to send power to this as well as read the thermistor for temperature reading on the bed. This can slip into place in these little mounts here. This is literally the first time I'm ever doing this, so we'll see how it goes. But it slides back into that edge connector and now it's engaged. You got your thermistor reading, you've got your power and ground going to it, and it can be energized. I really like this idea. Rather than having a secondary connector that you have to manually plug in while you're installing the bed, which could be left a little bit loose or, you know, create additional resistance from not being plugged in properly, this allows for a more foolproof design about how to get everything connected properly. And it also does allow that you could have multiple beds. So you could pop one of these beds out of there, let it cool naturally for print removal, swap another one in and get right back to printing. Continuing our way down the Z axis, we have a Bowden drive extruder assembly on the side of the Z axis going to the tool head. Now this unit is a beta unit that we have on display here. This is not the final production setup that folks ordering kits. By the way, I haven't mentioned, LDO Motors does have kits now available for pre-order for these machines. Batch one is almost if not already sold out here in the US and batch two is coming soon. The extruder that will come in the kits that are available for pre-order is the LDO Orbiter extruder. This one looks like it's using the Bontech BMG gears in a more simplified design. So you will get an Orbiter. 
Along that line, continuing down the Z-axis on this thing, we have a quick tensioning belt system for the belted Z-axis that is driven by a Nemo 14 pancake stepper motor through a planetary gear reduction. So it's plenty strong to support this bed while under power and lift it while running a print, but is finer than lead screw might be and less bulky and taking up less space than you would have to if you had a attached lead screw or had to direct drive off of a larger motor. Of course, continuing away from that extruder being a Bowden drive, we feed through the Bowden tube into a custom Fetus hot end made for this machine. It actually has a 90 degree heater block on it. So filament feeds in from the side and then makes a 90 degree turn to head straight up to print onto the bed surface. This newer design is using a ceramic heater element like the bamboos or a lot of hot ends are moving toward now for good rapid heat up and a decently sized melt zone on here to get quality flow that you're going to want for maybe pushing this thing a little more as time goes on. Getting power to that heater element, the part cooling fan, the heat sink fan, we've got a LDO USB board on here. It's using the XT30 plus two connector on it to make a good solid connection back to the MCU inside of this machine. That USB board does have an RP2040 processor on it. It is its own dedicated MCU for the tool head. It includes an accelerometer for input shaper tuning and it all the ports on it are spoken for right now with the heater, thermistor and the fans on this setup. The Positron team has the goal of trying to get an additional port on there for your choice of bed leveling sensors. Currently it uses an IR sensor, but the goal is to give you options down the road. That's not in stone yet, but that's the hope. That tool head is mounted to a very unique motion system in here. It functions like a Core XY, but it is not your mother's Core XY, that's for sure. It's based off of an HBOT motion system, but a lot of folks are taking to calling it the Positron system because there's quite a few unique things inside of here. Originally, in the earlier versions of this, it used the Synchro Mesh belt setup. Now they are running three millimeter belts. They have found that as they do change plane throughout their motion system travel, they are handling it just fine and a lot easier to source and deal with. On the X axis, this thing is using an MGN nine rail. On the Y axis, it has an MGN 12 with decent preload on both of them. So it's a really solid motion system as it's carrying everything and just working off of those rails for belt tensioning, tool head motion, all of that. There's no additional gantry components here. Continuing along with the theme of a complicated but simple setup. This is using sensorless homing. So there's no homing switches on X or Y axis. And it uses that infrared sensor I mentioned earlier on the USB board to home the Z axis. There are a handful of LED lights in here, two NeoPixels in the front of the Y axis area, and then three back here on the MCU board shining up through this top panel to give you status indication, additional light on your print area, or whatever you want to program them to do. And a fun feature is that you can move the tool head out here to the front corner of the bed for easy access for working on it, you know, changing out your thermistor, cleaning out a clog from your nozzle, whatever you might need to do on this thing. And remember, you can, of course, just easily pop the bed out of place and get even further access in there. Underneath the tool head, there's a pair of genuine carbon fiber panels that are hiding the electronics inside of this machine. Popping the screws out of those and those off of the machine gets us to a custom LDO designed mainboard for this build. They're not taking some random board and shoehorning it in here. They actually purpose made a board for this project with additional expansion as well. As we're looking at it here, Z end stop, X end stop, Y end stop, additional fan ports, including three wire fan, adjustable fan voltages. So if you want a five volt fan or 24 volt fan, you have those options. LDO is really stepping up their board line lately. That board is powered by an RP2040 processor and something I find really unique about it is it also seems to have an inbuilt USB and ethernet hub that goes to the CM4 Raspberry Pi compute module that's running Clipper on this machine. We'll take a look at that in a second because it's not inside of here. There are also fuses aplenty on this board. So the power supply for the entire board, for the heater, for the bed, and the various components on here should be pretty solid and safe. 
and supplying power to this thing is a DC to DC board on the other side of the machine. That takes power from a DC barrel jack coming into the side of the machine and also has a switch circuit on it to power on and off the machine at will. One of the updates that is intended to be coming to this whole setup is replacement of that DC to DC board, or at least the optional replacement of it with a slim, low profile power supply dedicated to this machine. We'll take a look at what's powering it right now in a second, but that is the goal for future iterations of this. So people pre-ordering the kits should have no problem upgrading to that if they want to, or sticking with these external power supply if they don't care. Currently power is being supplied by a pretty straightforward power brick here. 200 watt rating, 24 volts, runs through a DC barrel jack into the back of the machine. Pretty straightforward. Flipping this machine over, we can find the machined aluminum base panel of the entire structure here. This provides a lot of the rigidity that exists in the setup, as well as functioning as one large heat sink for the main board, which does have thermal pads on the back side of it to transfer heat into this panel. And for the pair of A and B motors, the NEMA 17 1.8 degree motors, which which are the super slim HTs from LDO, and they do have the Positron logo on them. On this beta unit, the feet on here are just stuck on, but on the units that are gonna be in production, there's gonna be threaded holes at those point for threaded feet. Also, so you could bolt this thing to a lot of different configurations. We have an idea or two about where I might stick one of these in the studio. And for the brains of the operation, we have the little clipper screen assembly, which also has a Raspberry Pi CM4 mounted to the back side of it, which is obviously the beating heart, the brain of the operation here. It has a USB-C connection on this housing here that will then connect to the main board as well as go through to the tool head board. So you just got one cable connection from the screen to the machine to get this whole thing up and running. Obviously the screen and CM4 are inside of a 3D printable housing, does come with the SD card in the kit and overall a nice little setup. It has a screen protector, as you saw earlier, but also flips around and turns into a kickstand for the screen. You can run this machine off clipper screen through this interface or through your web browser interface like any other clipper powered 3D printer. The Positron is just such a unique experience. Looking down through a print bed that's printing on the underside of it, being able to see the print while it's going, but still have active bed heating. Easy to transport. I saw this thing go through airport security easier than my camera bag did. It was kind of frustrating, honestly and easy to deploy on site. So you could use it in your day job and take it home at the end of the day and it not be a major inconvenience to you. It's just great in a world where everybody's complaining about how every machine coming out is a clone of another machine. This is definitely standing out as something different. And with that, I think that is our inside dissected look at the Positron, getting up close and personal with this thing in a way that I haven't seen any other content so far. And I am now even more excited to build one of these for myself at some point. If you are too, you can find a link in the description. Pre-orders from LDO Motors are available right now and you could get one right, for yourself. So I came back from the store. They didn't have any milk, but they had the almost juice. So you know what, that works. 